This is Keith Albertson of IASC. We are at HSPI in Orlando on the final day of our conference with our Friday keynote speaker. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chloe Harouche. I'm the co-founder of The Lambie, a primary care members club based in New York City. You described in your talk how your own uh, personal health care experience kind of helped inspire this idea. Tell us how you came to the idea uh, with your partner of founding the Lambi based on that. Of course. Um, so when I was 23, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, my treatment was very standard, but I realized through that experience all the different challenges that patients were facing, um, namely the amount of coordination that they needed to do to manage their care. Um, I was seeing a bunch of different specialists. They were all amazing. Um, but what I lacked was someone who really helped connect the dots and really helped me uh, quarterback my health and make sure that no open loops were left. And so as we thought about how we could address the problems that we both had as patients, um, we knew we needed to address that specifically. So the other thing that we realized is that the um, conversation within primary care specifically, but really with all specialties, is around reactionary approach to medicine really treating the system, the symptom, not the system. And I wanted to have a conversation with my doctor more about prevention, more about nutrition, ways in which I could take control of my health and be more proactive. Um, and so what we realized is that primary care, as it stood, which really should serve as that first sign of defense, that place for people to go to, to seek counsel, to seek advice, to have trust, wasn't there. And so many young people today just don't have a primary care doctor and instead go straight to see a specialist or to urgent care, which is creating a very fragmented and siloed system and a lot of open loops in care. And so we wanted to sort of reclaim the role of primary care. Um, and by doing that, we, we knew we needed to address two sides of the coin. One being make primary care more robust, more relevant to our audience by incorporating wellness and elements of prevention into the conversation and the scope. And secondly, we needed to change the perception of primary care from, I need to go to the doctor because it's my annual physical, rather than I want to go to the doctor because this is a time for me to optimize, for me to improve my health, for me to really be intellectually curious about everything going on with me and my data. And so we thought about how we could sort of take an engineer's mindset really, um, and really think back to, if we wanna start from scratch, what are the first principles that we need to change, that we need to think about in order to change the scope and the experience. And, and that's really how we went about every step of, of the patient experience. Well, and, and as you mentioned, uh, you have an engineering background, uh, so you bring that point of view to this idea. How does coming to a conference like this of healthcare systems engineers help, how can they help make a difference in getting more people to take that primary care approach? Yeah, so I think that, you know, what I have noticed um, is the issue, and this stems from also my background in Deloitte Consulting, where I was focused on technology implementations, is that the implementation itself is where the gaps are. Providers are very used to doing things the way that they were taught, and they're not used to leveraging technology or improved systems in a way that makes the entire process more effective. And so I think the way in which we should, as an industry, all come together is figuring out how that implementation process can be done more smoothly and how we could be facilitating that transition from status quo to a new way of doing things, recognizing that doctors are resistant to change, that they're scared, and that there's so much work to be done that trying to change to a new system is you know, a layer of work that they just don't wanna deal with. A lot of the discussion at the conference has been over the challenges of the last two years, and certainly healthcare and caregivers have been very much in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see maybe this experience changing the way people approach their health care, approach their primary care, and how it might make a difference in setting up a model like yours? Yeah. I mean, I really do hope that people recognize that the reason why we're dealing with such a crazy pandemic is because there is so many underlying conditions that people are just unaware of. And obviously we know the, that comorbidities exacerbate the effects of COVID, but what we haven't been talking about is how certain nutrient deficiencies and mineral deficiencies are similarly creating those, those issues. And that's because those don't have sy symptoms associated with them. So unless you're going proactively to do your blood work, unless you're proactively trying to 
have better habits around your lifestyle, your sleep, your movement, these are things that could exacerbate something like COVID in, in a setting where it, that didn't need to be the case. And so my hope is that people realize that there are things that are in their control um, that can really make a huge difference in terms of eliminating COVID and, and preventing something like COVID from happening to us again. Well, Chloe, we very much appreciate you being at HSPI. We enjoyed your talk very much. Thank we, you. we hope you'll be back again and maybe tell us how it's gone once uh, Lambie's been up for a little while and we can see how this model is, is having an effect on things. That would so, be great. So thank, thank you for, you for being me. here and we look forward to seeing you again at our future conferences. Sounds great. All right, thank you.